Here we have 13.4 finding the inverse of a two by two matrix. So the way it works is we have to have what's called the diagonal matrix. And a diagonal matrix uh, must be a square matrix, meaning that the rows and the columns have to match, okay? And if we know that it's a two by two matrix, so we know that there's four spots, right? <clears throat> two rows, two columns. Then um, there has to be a diagonal of ones in this matrix, and then everything else is going to be a zero. So every other ma um, entry in the matrix is a zero. And so in order for you to find the inverse, what you're gonna do is you're gonna write the um, function that you were given here, and then you're gonna write the identity matrix or the diagonal matrix next to it. And then your goal is to try to turn this matrix into the identity matrix and once you've done that, whatever results on this right-hand side is your inverse, okay? And so we've got to talk about what we can do to, to make this happen, okay? So anytime you want to change an entry to a one, all you need to do is multiply by a reciprocal. So to change an entry to a one, multiply by its reciprocal, okay? Now to change an entry to a zero, you must multiply the other row by a value that will yield the opposite value in the entry and add the two rows together. Okay, so this one's a little harder to explain. It's easier when it's seen. Okay? And there's also an order in which you have to do these things, okay? You have to change this one first, then this one second, then this one third, and then finally this one last, okay? If you do it in any other order, it's chances are you're gonna keep going back and forth between changing things to ones and zeros and then undoing what you've just done, okay? So it's very important that you go in this order. Now, I do want this entry to be a one, right? Because the identity matrix has a one here. So if this is the first thing I have to address, I want it to be a one. It already is a one, so I don't need to do anything to this matrix to make it a one. So the first step is already done for me. So it's already done, I don't have anything to do. Now, when it comes to the second step, what I wanna do is I wanna make this a zero. So what I have to do is I have to turn this to the opposite of this so that when I add them together, it will result in a zero. Now notice that this is negative one and this is positive one. This entry is already the opposite of this entry that needs to turn to a zero. So I like to write down what I'm about to do so that I can know what's happening, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I don't actually need to multiply row one by anything. I'm just gonna take row one and I'm gonna add row two directly. And when I add them directly, I should get the zero in this entry that I'm supposed to get. When I do that, I'm gonna replace row two, okay? So I'm gonna write row one here, the whole thing, and I'm gonna write row two underneath it going to add them together. I get 0, negative 1, 1, and 1. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite my matrix, but this time I'm going to use this as my row 2. Okay, so second step is now done. Now this is going to be my third step, but notice that that value has changed, right? So this is now my third step. Now going to get that to turn to a one. We want it to be a one, right? You need ones in the diagonal. You have to multiply by the reciprocal. 
Um, so what is the reciprocal of negative one? It's just negative one, right? So row two is gonna get multiplied by one over negative one, which is how you write the reciprocal of uh, negative one, which is the same as just doing row two times negative one, and that's gonna become my new row two. So notice I have to do the whole row times this. So row one, I'm not doing anything to that. That's staying the same. It's row two that's getting multiplied by negative one. So zero times negative one is zero. Negative one times negative one is a positive one. One times negative one is negative one. And again, one times negative one is negative one. So now I've got these three. This is the last one that I have to address. So let me write here third step because that's what this was. And now I need to go on to my fourth step. And that's to turn this into a zero. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to have to change this into the opposite of two, which is negative two. And it's not a negative two. So I'm going to have to multiply the other. This is the one I want to change. So this is the other row that they're talking about. So I'm going to take row two and I'm going to multiply it by a value that will yield the opposite value in the entry I'm trying to change. So what do I need this to become? I need this a negative 2 which is the opposite of positive 2 so I'm going to multiply it by negative 2 so that this will become a negative 2 and when I combine it with row 1 I'll get the 0 where it needs to go now this is the entry I'm trying to replace so that's the entry that is going to become the new row okay and now let's do this math so 0 times negative 2 is 0 1 times negative 2 is negative 2 Negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. Negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. Row 1 is going to go underneath this. And then I'm going to add these together. So I get 1, 0, 3, and 2. So the result is going to be row 1 gets replaced. Row 2 is going to stay the same as it was before. And so now I have the identity matrix over here, which means that this is actually a inverse. And I'm finished with this particular problem, okay? Now I do have another example. I want you to see what happens here. So if I take this matrix and I put it um, across with the identity, right? And we start going through our steps. So this is gonna be my first step. How do I change that into a one? You multiply by the reciprocal, so take row one and multiply it by the reciprocal of eight, which is one over eight, and that will give me my new row one. So when I do that, one eighth times eight is one. One eighth times four is one half. And you can put these in the calculator if you need to. One times one eighth is one eighth. Zero times one eighth is zero. Row two is not changing, so I'm just going to rewrite it over. Then what I need to do is I need to do this second. And so I need a positive four here so that when I combine these together, I get a zero. So I'm going to do positive four times row one plus row two to replace row two because I want the zero here. Okay. So four times every single one of these is going to be four, two, one half, and zero, and then the second row is just gonna get rewritten exactly as it is, and I'm gonna add these together. So I get zero, zero, one half, and one. So I'm gonna replace row two with zero, zero, one half, and one. And then row one is gonna stay the same. Now, here, I would try to change this to a zero. But what happens when you try to take row two times reciprocal of zero? First of all, there's no such thing as the reciprocal of zero, but why? Because when you do one over zero, this is actually undefined, okay? Which means you can't multiply by something that's undefined. So this is why you would say that the answer to this one is undefined. Um, or you might see the phrase like A inverse does not exist. So whichever wording Alex decides to use, there's two different ways that it could say. It could say um, 
that it does not exist or that it's undefined. Um, there's a bunch of different ways that it can, it'll, it'll express that. But what's important is that you know that once you get zero, zero, you can't change a zero into a one. You can change a one into a zero, but you can't change a zero into a one. Unfortunately, it's stuck that way. You can't continue, which means you can't give them the inverse.